everybody. I'm at uh, Half Moon Bay, where I flew the other day from Watsonville. And I'm going to fly back to Watsonville this afternoon. I uh, have the uh, chart, the flight plan up here. Going to take off runway 30, uh, fly out along the uh, coastline down to uh, Santa Cruz and out over the bay and back into Watsonville on landing on runway 2. It's an hour and a half approach uh, with uh, RNAV LPV approach, localizer performance with vertical guidance. So it's all GPS all the way, almost all the way to the runway. Runway 2 at Watsonville. I'll probably be landing with a tailwind, but I want to do this landing with uh, some vertical guidance to the runway. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to bring up the approach chart. Just You can see it. So this is what they call the approach plate. And take a good look at it. Uh, from Santa Cruz, fly out here to Lepwu, then straight in to, uh, almost straight to the runway. And uh, want to hit uh, this point, which is the initial approach fix at 3,000 feet. Um, our maximum cruise altitude will be 4,000. So I'm going to set that now. It's in the, uh, you can see the green alt setting. I'm setting it on my Logitech um, multifunction panel, which is a thing I have right here, a physical panel. I'm going to superimpose this on the map and uh, on the flight plan map. So you can see we're here, we're going to be flying down here. Check it from time to time just to see where we are. And I'm going to announce my uh, takeoff intentions now. Uh, there's no tower here. Uh, so it's kind of C and B seen. Announce taxi. Alpha Foxtrot, traffic Beechcraft, Kilo Yankee, India Victor Alpha, India Romeo is taxiing to runway tree zero. Which is the active runway here today. And it's over that way, okay? Certainly not over that way. So I'm gonna turn around to the right here and try not to hit a building. At least the brake. slowly pivot around. I can hit gas tanks, but not the building. There we go. There's my uh, cheating taxi ribbon. I don't really need it at this airport. I've flown in here, but never flown out of it. The reason I wanted to do Wanted to do it uh, going back to another video on the way back is that on the way up here I had the coastline mainly on the right so I couldn't really get a good view of it without uh, stepping outside the airplane. This way I'll see it, we'll see it, find out my window pilot's window and it's a clear day here so uh, should be we'll get a nice look at the coast from uh, 4,000 feet short flight about 48 miles really no more than 20-30 minutes flying time if that
I didn't get a look at Half Moon Bay taking off. Yeah, I believe this is the runway. Okay, so, so there's our plane today. I'm going to lower flaps one notch. Flaps are lowered. We're all set, ready to go. I want to do. <clears throat> okay. We'll be on autopilot pretty quickly unless I decide to cruise out over the town. We'll take a look at Cap Moon Bay before we uh, head south to Watsonville. Sort of west. Same Kilo way. Hotel Alpha Foxtrot Traffic Beach Craft Kilo Yankee India Victor Alpha India Romeo taking off runway tree zero west departure. Sort of west. Anyway, nobody here but us chickens. Yeah, right, let's go. Here up. Trim for positive climb. What to? And flaps. Don't need those. I'm not sure where the town is. Go out of your ways and see what's to be seen. No, it's not there. Must be uh, back the other way. Turn around. Got about a five degree angle of ascent, maybe seven and a half. There's the airport. Where is half one day, anyhow? There it is. <clears throat> it's there all the time. Alright. Hit nav. And, uh, flight level change. Okay, so we're going to climb to uh, 4,000 now. The autopilot's going to handle everything. And let's see right here, we're going to come around on this course. That's the Magenta Line is the GPS course. And this being a... Uh, an RNAV approach with uh, vertical guidance to the runway. Uh, once I hit 4,000, I'm going to arm vertical navigation, which is this switch over here, that button, VNAV, vertical navigation. Oh, we're out over the Pacific Ocean now and uh, 
climbing slowly to uh, four thousand feet. Not taking its time. Not even. Uh, what is that? It's five degrees. Not even two and a half degrees. Uh, percent. I think I'm going to speed this up. I'm just going to use vertical speed to get there. Flight level change is too slow for me today. So, a thousand vertical feet a minute. And a minute will turn back towards the coast. And there we go. I love this uh, paint job, this livery. And I think I'm going to check in with air traffic control. Ask them to follow us. Nortal approach Beechcraft Kilo Yankee India Victor Alpha India Romeo is type Beechcraft B36 Niner miles south of Kilo Hotel Alpha Foxtrot 3600 feet. Request flight following. Okay, I just set the reset the altimeter, and you'll notice that the uh, air altitude strip here started doing stuff because uh, we were actually uh, higher by the by the barometric uh, setting than than uh, the altimeter was showing. Anyway, it's all corrected now. Kilo uh, Hotel Alpha Foxtrot, that's uh, KHAF, which is the uh, airport code for uh, Half Moon Bay, KF. I'm going to slow down now, and I'm going to uh, change the uh, altitude setting. I'm going to change the altitude setting. Uh, we'll reduce it to, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to reduce it quite a bit. I'll show you why. So, we're almost to Santa Cruz. Well, let's see, where are we? Not yet. Um, just cutting back in over the coast. I haven't really been looking at the scenery much. So the way this is going to work, we're at 4,000 and somewhere here after Lepu, we'll reach the top of the descent, meaning the beginning of the descent to 3,000. And the... Uh, Fox of um, down here is the altitude is 2,000 feet. Uh, you have to give the autopilot permission to go lower than 4,000 and really lower than 2,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, Otherwise, it won't go there. It won't. It won't descend if it doesn't have permission. So that's why I set the altitude setting here, the alt setting, to sixteen hundred. Um, that's below. That is, in other words, that's below two thousand. So you have to give it permission to go below that, as long as it's set to a lower altitude, it will follow this vertical navigation approach, localizer performance, which meaning side to side with vertical guidance to the runway. Localizer performance is, there's Highway 1 down there. Localizer performance 
A localizer gives you lateral guidance where to the runway center line. I'm repeating myself for anybody who's never watched one of these. And uh, vertical guidance is what it sounds like. It takes you along a descent angle that will bring you to the runway or almost to the runway. You still have to do a little flying yourself to land the plane. So this is the beautiful uh, Santa Cruz County coastline. Heplin Bay is in San Mateo County. I don't know where the line is exactly. Anyway, nice view of the coast. Back to the north south and up here at Santa Cruz is when we enter the Monterey Bay. It's been a long time since I have driven this way up Highway 1. One time I did it from San Francisco all the way down to Santa Cruz. That was quite a while ago. There's a community here called Davenport, and they have a cement plant there. I don't know if that's what that is down there. I kind of doubt it, but let's go on the map, go on Google Earth and see what that is. I don't know. There's another place up here called Año Nuevo. Where if you go at the right time of the year, you can see elephant seals that have uh, migrated there to mate. And they're just uh, all over the beach there. Sunbathing. Okay, so now we're going to cut across the... Uh, coast here and... Uh, we're flying directly to Santa Cruz at that point. We're going to turn back out to the Monterey Bay. So, here we are. Coming up on Santa Cruz, that's over there. Where I used to work. Or the newspaper. It looks like some kind of quarry. One thing uh, flying around in the flight sim, especially in the local area, is I see things that are there, uh, I assume, that I wouldn't see otherwise. I mean, I'm not going to walk across these mountains, but there, so there are features there I would never see unless I actually got in a small plane and flew around, and I'm not going to do that, because frankly, I don't know what wouldn't know what the hell I was doing if I tried it. Just because I can do this doesn't mean I can fly one of these things. I suppose if I were sitting in the right hand seat, the co-pilot seat, and the pilot had a medical emergency, I might know what to do to land it, but uh, that would be a, kind of a scary proposition. So, coming up on Santa Cruz in about 2.3 miles, and then we're going to make a kind of a right turn out towards the bay. And I believe we're going to pass right over the UC Santa Cruz campus here. UC Santa Cruz, one of eight or nine, I forget, campuses in the University of California system. And you can see here these open fields, which are actually geographic features. And there are separate colleges here. And most of them are back in these redwoods. And it's a beautiful campus. So here we go. There's Santa Cruz. There's the uh, Yacht Harbor over there. San Lorenzo River. Uh, the uh, wharf, 
looks like it's sunken. Not really. Now we're going to go. The next waypoint is Lepwu. That's the IAF or initial approach fix. And somewhere after Lepwu, we're going to hit the top of descent and be descending to IAFI. India, Alpha, Foxtrot, Yankee. India, Foxtrot, Alpha, Foxtrot, Yankee. I'm going to learn the NATO alphabet one of these days. And I'm going to keep the speed and I want to keep it here in the white zone. Because that's where I have to be to lower, to get configure the plane for landing flaps and gear. Uh, anything outside of that, up in the green, uh, you can damage the uh, control surfaces. You can damage your flaps uh, lowering them. I don't know about the gear, but uh, definitely you're not supposed to lower flaps above that green, white. I mean, okay, so up here. TOD at Lepwu. That means top of descent. And one thing I have to remember that I sometimes forget I loaded the approach before I took off, but I have to remember to arm it. If you don't arm it, nothing happens. And I've done that before early on. I thought loading, loading the approach was done. I loaded it, so why isn't it working? Well, because I hadn't hit APR, but I don't want to do that yet. Show you why. We're here, and I suppose I could do it here. I try it. Nothing lost if it doesn't work. When I arm it, uh, in addition to this V path, I should see a GP for glide path. But I think I'm going to wait till after we started our descent. I like to arm it about around between here and here. So where's Watsonville? Watsonville is over here someplace, probably right there. That's where it is. Because I cheat. I have road signs in the air. So, uh, why aren't we descending? Well, the top of descent has moved away from where it was at the left loop. It's all calculated by the um, avionics system, the computer, the flight computer. And it's based on current altitude, airspeed, and distance. So I need to be at 3,000 at IAFI. We've got 4.2 miles to go. And this is the top of descent now. So we're closing on that pretty fast. And I should, we should see. The V path will go green very shortly, and there it goes. And we're going to start our descent. So now you see on the altitude strip, we're going down, and that's all the autopilot. Now I'm going to try arming the approach, and that worked. We have V path in green. GP glide path in white. So that means uh, that when we get to uh, Fox of, Fox of, we'll be on a glide path the rest of the way to the runway, runway two. So that's the final approach fix. And that's where the glide path kicks in. And there are white, white caps on the bay today. Uh, they weren't yesterday, 
Uh, this is live weather. Real weather. Same weather we have outside. And we've had a lot of wind here, so... The uh, white caps are to be expected. Okay, V-Path is in white again because we're not going to descend until we get here. That's another top of descent. We've got a uh, 20 knot crosswind here. Um, that's what it says. 18 knots, 20 knots. Then we have a 20 knot tailwind and an 18 knot crosswind. And the plane is actually crabbed a little bit to the left to compensate for this crosswind. So that's why it's not um, lined up straight with this arrow. Still have feet path and we're descending again. So we pass that um, only 1.6 miles from Foxov. I'm going to slow down. I need to be at 2,000 feet there if I want this approach to work. And there's the runway up ahead. And I want this, uh, still have GP in white. I want that to go green. I mean, we will continue descending to the runway. Okay, we made 2,000 just in time, and let's see what happens. Okay, are we continuing to descend? I don't know. This seems to be happening. Okay, do we got the glide path? And we're really um, crapped quite a bit, so there must be a pretty good crosswind. Got a 20 knot crosswind already down here, and there may be one 20 knots at the runway, which would be pretty intense. And I've got to get the speed picked up as we begin our descent. And I have to get my flaps in, so I've got to reduce down to the white zone there. I've got a notch of flaps, gear down. Don't you love those sounds? And full flaps. Throttling up so we don't stall. And pretty much right on the money for the runway now. And it's only about a six knot crosswind and a uh, four knot tailwind, so that's not not too bad. Getting pretty close to stall speed there, gotta throttle up. I never announced my landing, but which I should have done again. This is an uncontrolled airport, and you're supposed to go on the traffic channel to tell people where you are and that you're landing. And I didn't do it, but I'm not in flight school, so anyway. Okay, I think I'm going to go on off the autopilot now straight now oh, I could have done that a little better you can see the way the wind sock is blowing up there. It's pretty, pretty good breeze. So I had that to contend with. Okay, well that was that. I'm gonna go park this thing now and uh, 
one of the big things that's missing when you fly in a simulator is any sense of the g-forces unless you get a some really fancy expensive chair that can uh, simulate that you're not getting the real experience at all so. I would say I do have the illusion of being in a plane when I do this I kind of forget I'm sitting at my desk in my man cave anyway the gas and that's it at least I hope you enjoyed pretending to be on this flight and uh, I'm gonna leave you with the uh, what they always say on the uh, ATC air traffic control good day